Hi everyone, this is Peter Harris from Commercial Property Advisors, author of this book, Commercial Real Estate Investing for Dummies, and coach and mentor to many people across this great nation of ours. The title and subject of today's video is called Mobile Home Park Investing for Beginners. So that's you, let's go. I'm going to go with you eight critical things that you must know if you are a beginning investor or wanting to get into mobile home park investing. All right. Um, number one is I'm going to explain to you what the two types of mobile home park investing or ownership are. Number two, I'm going to share with you the demand for mobile home parks. Now, if you want to get in this business, there you must convince yourself. And to convince yourself, I'm going to share with you what the demand is for this type of investing. Number three is why invest in mobile home parks? You must have a compelling reason why you want to get in, into mobile home park investing. And I have four compelling reasons for you. Number four, the top three misconceptions of mobile home park investing. Now I'm sure these things you will be able to relate to. All right. Number five, the five tips on what to look for when you're starting off investing in mobile home parks. <clears throat> I would also call these the five must-haves. <clears throat> Number six, the three big no-nos of investing in mobile home parks. Now, these are three things I want you to avoid at all costs. All right? Number seven, how and where to find mobile home parks for sale for you to invest in. And lastly, probably the most important, the three most common ways to finance your first mobile home park investment. All right, okay, so let's get started. Okay, all right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the two types of mobile home park investing or ownership, as well as the, what the demand is for mobile home park investing. Okay, so number one, there are two types of mobile home park uh, investing or ownership. Number one is, <clears throat> Let's say that this is mobile home park, all right? And then these are the lots, the mobile home park lots, okay? So the first form of ownership or investing is you uh, uh, just purchasing this land here and renting out the spaces, okay? Let's say each space gets $300, all right? So what you'll be getting is you'll be getting uh, the, the rents each month for these spaces. Now the homes that actually go on this lot are owned by the residents, by the tenants. You do not take care of the, of the homes. You take care of the, of the roadways, the amenities, utilities, things like that. All right. And number and the second form of ownership would be again, you have a mobile home park and you have the lots here. And the second form, not only do you own the lots, but you also own the homes that are on them. All right. So you're pretty much operating it like an apartment building. And we're going to get into, into why this first case is much better than the second case. All right, okay, so those are the two types of um, ownership here. The first one, you just own uh, the dirt, the land, and lease off the lots, take care of the utilities. The second case, not only are you, do you own the land and the lot and renting them out, but you also are managing the homes that are on them, okay? All right, let's get into the second part here, the demand. All right, I have four key numbers up here that's gonna uh, share with you what the demand is for mobile home parks. Number one is 8.6 million, all right? There are 8.6 million mobile homes in the US, all right? 8.6 million, that's quite a few. Next number is 50,000. There are actually 50,000 mobile home parks in the US, all right? The third number, 60 million. This is 60 million people, all right? Who make about $20,000 per year in income, all right? These are considered um, uh, ideal people to uh, rent um, a mobile home park spaces. The last number is $1,000 per month, and what this is, is this is the average apartment rent today in the United States, all right? And so this number, um, I'm sorry, this group here cannot afford this number here. 
So you have 60 million people who need a place to live and they cannot afford the average uh, apartment unit. So they go into uh, the mobile home park category. The last fact I want to tell you that, did you know that um, uh, 8% of the U.S. population live in mobile home parks? 8%. That's a huge number. All right. All right. So hopefully uh, now you understand the two types of mobile home park ownership and what the true demand is for uh, mobile home park um, uh, investments. All right. So next thing we're going to go into, we're going to go to why invest in mobile home parks and what the top three misconceptions are. All right. Why invest in mobile home parks? I have four compelling reasons for you. Number one is there is a growing demand for affordable housing. Uh, in this country, in this economy, whether it's going up, down, or sideways, there will always be a need for affordable housing. In fact, the fastest growing segment of housing in this country is affordable housing. A few minutes ago, I shared with you the fact that there are 60 million people in this country that make about $20,000 per year. Those are, that's your target audience for your mobile home park uh, residents. All right. Number two, stability and predictability. Another compelling reason to invest in mobile home parks is there's a misconception that people think that um, mobile home parks, uh, people tend to move everywhere. And they don't. And the reason why is, is uh, well, here's, let me tell you this. Um, I've seen this uh, years and years and years that um, when a mobile home park, when a mobile home is delivered actually to the lot many, many years ago, majority of them are still there today, all right? a majority of them. That's over 50%. So that tells you that how stable and predictable a mobile home park can be. All right, So it's a very stable, very predictable um, investment because it's really, it's, in fact, it costs about $3,000 to move a mobile home from point A to point B. And let's face it, the typical resident doesn't have the type of money. All right, number three, there's limited competition for new parks. Let's face it, if you are a developer and you go to the city's planning department and you have a plot of land in which you want to develop something and you ask them the question, what do you need? Last on your list, will they say mobile home park? They will probably say apartment building, uh, shopping center, office building, industrial center, and the very bottom of the list is mobile home parks. In fact, some cities, have injunctions against mobile home park development and because of its um, reputation. All right, so you'll have limited competition of new parks because it probably and most likely cannot be built. Lastly, number four, there's a potential for higher returns. Now, I'm going to compare mobile home park to apartment buildings. Now, the reason why there's a potential for higher returns is because if you buy the mobile home park correctly, again, what you are buying, what you are buying is you're buying the land and you're leasing out the lots. You're taking care of the road, you're taking care of the amenities and utilities, but the homes you're not taking care of, all right? Now, uh, an apartment building, you are you own the, the, the land, the lots, and the building, and the insides, and the outsides, the roofs, uh, everything, the stoves, refrigerators, all those things, um, the kitchens and bathrooms, all those things you own, and you have to take care of. In a mobile home park, in mobile home park investment, you only take care of the dirt. That's all you do. So the cost of ownership, the operating expenses are much lower percentage-wise compared to an apartment building, and thereby increasing your, your cash and cash return, your return on investment. All right? Okay, so those are the four compelling reasons why to invest in mobile home parks. Next is, I'm going to go with you the top three misconceptions of mobile home parks. And I'm sure you can relate to these three things. Number one is there's a misconception that mobile home parks are filled with, uh, I'm going to write this out, crazy, lazy people. That's a misconception. All right. Did you know that uh, there are mobile home parks in Hollywood, California, and in Malibu, California, right on the beach, inhabited by Sean Penn and movie stars and other uh, wealthy uh, Hollywood types and they live in mobile home parks and they have a beautiful mobile home so they are not crazy and lazy. Some of them may be crazy but they're not lazy. I'm just, just kidding. But uh, uh, the average person in a mobile home park has an average job. 
the average person in mobile home park has uh, an average income. And the average person in mobile home park has an average family. They're just like you and I. All right, so, there are, so this is a misconception. The second misconception is uh, people think that mobile home parks can pull, pull out at any time. They can just pick up and leave. And as I mentioned before, it's very costly to do that. It's going to cost you uh, about $3,000 with a special truck um, to move out of mobile home park. Uh, if you have an RV park, yes, you can back up your hitch and, and take off. If you have an apartment building, yes, the tenants can just wait until there's dark and they can just move out and they'll skip out and you never see them. But in a mobile home park, that is a misconception because of the cost and the, the uh, logistics of moving your and taking your home. All right, the last misconception is huge. Um, people think you can't get loans and that's just not true, all right? So probably uh, the uh, uh, mobile home parks has uh, probably the most options on getting loans. Let me explain. Um, mobile home parks, uh, banks love mobile home parks. In fact, um, if you look at today's research, it shows that uh, out of all the commercial loan types, mobile home parks have the lowest default rates out of all of them, including apartments, including office buildings, strip centers, and self-stores. Mobile home parks are at the top or at the bottom of, I'm sorry, at the bottom of default rates, all right? meaning that the loans that go bad, all right? Um, the, probably the, uh, I'll go over this later on, but the, the easiest way and the most popular way of buying mobile home parks is through seller financing, through creative financing, which is the favorite thing we like to teach uh, our students, which you'll find out very soon. All right, so, okay, so why invest in mobile home parks? the top three misconceptions of mobile home parks. Next thing I'll go with you are the five um, uh, quick tips on what to look for in mobile home parks and then the three big no-nos when investing in mobile home parks. Okay, next is five tips. I'm gonna give you five quick tips on what to look for when investing uh, your, on your very first mobile home park. And next is the three big no-nos, what to avoid when looking for a park to purchase and invest in. Okay, first of all, areas, all right? These are five quick tips. The first area, I want you to focus on the area with increasing increasing population, not decreasing, all right? When an area has a decreasing population, there's most likely a stigma attached to that area and people are leaving, and so should you, all right? You want, at the minimum, for the population to be stable, but uh, we, we like to go into areas where the population is uh, increasing. Now, the location is important, and you guys have probably heard me say this many times in previous videos, that you can fix a property, but you can't fix a location, all right? Okay, next is, I want you to stay away from the the high star mobile home parks all right mobile home parks what do I mean by high star are the a class top of the line beautiful the ones that have the clubhouses and the and the magnificent landscape and the grand entrances stay away from those all right initially because the name of the game in mobile home, mobile home park investing is uh, affordability all right, you need to have, you need, your mobile home park should be a clean, cheap place to live because that's when you get the most of the people moving in, that's what will be most consistent, all right? You have people with too high incomes, they have options and uh, resources to leave, all right? Okay, so stay away from the high star mobile home parks, the A-class ones. Next is, um, seek out the mom and pop parks, okay? So mom and pop parks, all right? Now, what I mean by mom and pop are these small individual owners. The people that are not mom and pop, was, those are the large institutions. You don't want to uh, buy anything from them because it's going to be too expensive and your cash flow and your returns will be too low. So seek out the mom and pop parks. And out of the 50,000 uh, parks in the U.S., 
uh, at least a third of them are mom and pop parks. Okay, so you have, you have a, a great um, uh, numbers to choose from. Next is cap rate. I want you to have a going in cap rate, okay, of 10% at least, okay, 10% minimum, all right. Right. In my previous videos, I define how to calculate cap rate. You have to go through that. But I want you to have at least a 10% minimum cap rate going in. What I mean by going in is that the numbers that are given to you when you buy the park, the actual numbers must reflect a 10% cap rate going in, Okay, not after ownership. In fact, after you own the property, I expect you to have in you know, three, four, five, six years, to have a cap rate north of 15%, okay? Going in should be 10%. Lastly, number five is a good deal means you have easy, easy rent increases and okay, cost reduction, pardon my spelling here, all right? A good deal, all right? The, the five quick tips is a good deal. I want you to have easy rent increases and cost reduction options. What I mean by that is going into your deal, I want you to have, I want you to look at places where you can increase the rents, $10, $15, $20 over the next couple of years, all right? And uh, cost reduction options. For example, a cost reduction uh, option could be passing the utilities uh, some of the utilities over to the residents, okay? Or perhaps um, somehow improving some of the utilities to reduce some of the costs rather easily, all right? Okay, next is I'm going to go over the, the three big no-nos when, uh, if you're a beginner, uh, when going into mobile home park investments. The, no the first one is I want you to stay out of the hurricane hurricane zones, all right? My friends that invest in the Southwest, uh, in Texas and in that area, they well understand the devastation uh, to their investment that hurricanes can make, all right? When you are an apartment owner, um, you have insurance against that, okay? So when a hurricane comes along, rips off your roofs, cause damage, uh, the, the insurance company will pay for your rent and to fix up the building. So after a while, it's, it's kind of a mess, but after a while, you're okay, all right? On the other hand, mobile home parks, if a hurricane comes along and wipes out all the homes that don't belong to you, right? Um, what, do you what are you left with? Nothing. So y your insurance company, your insurance will not cover the rehab or the replacement of those homes. Now, the uh, residents who own the homes on your lots, they should have insurance, but Many of them, because of the income levels, don't have sufficient insurance or have no insurance. So it can be rather devastating to have a hurricane come through uh, your mobile home park. Okay, so we stay from that. Um, the second big no-no is I want you to stay away from park-owned homes. Okay, what I mean by park-owned homes are the homes that you as the mobile home park owner that you also own the homes okay i want you to stay away from that and the reason why is i want you to stay away from i want you to stick to the beauty of mobile home park ownership which is owning just the dirt okay owning just the roadways and utilities and then just charging rent for that just for the lot rent okay i do not want you to get into owning the homes all right and the reason why is when you own the homes, a, a mobile home, uh, first of all, it's a depreciating asset rather than an appreciating asset. And secondly, the cost of just repairing them. I mean, the lifetime of a mobile home, it, it can last for a while, but after a while, it's not going to last as long as a, as a regular single family home. There's going to be repairs. And when they move out, you have to clean it up. You have to replace windows. You have to fix up kitchens. All these things you have to do. Uh, that you wouldn't have to do if you only own just the dirt, okay? So this can lead to a lot of work, a lot of sleepless nights, and um, it, having owning the, the homes in a park take away the pure essence of mobile home park uh, investment and ownership. Okay, lastly, 
Um, I want you to make sure whatever you invest in that you look into the operating permit status. Okay? Most people, uh, because they don't know, they end up buying a mobile home park and not checking out the operating permit status. Basically, for um, you probably know what a certificate of occupancy is on a home, on an apartment building, in a single family home, that means that the city's um, uh, code department, housing department, came by and they checked out the place and make sure it's livable and make sure it lives up to the standards of the uh, statutes, the housing statutes in that city. All right. So an operating permit for mobile home park includes how many uh, lots can be on the um, on the on the park. Um, you know, uh, just other things. Um, you know, uh, when the permit expires and when it has to re up. All right. All those things are really really important uh, to know. In fact, if you don't know the operating permit status, and let's say there's something illegal going on or uh, going on in the park, actually, if you don't check this out, your park can be shut down. Your park um, can be fined, all right? And there's no way to go back to your previous owner and have them pay for it. It's on you, all right? So this is a big no-no to not check out the permit status. All right, okay, so I hope you enjoyed the five tips on what to look for when purchasing a park and the three big no-nos. The, uh, the next part we go into is a, uh, uh, on how to find mobile home parks for sale. Okay, how and where to find mobile home parks for sale. All right. Um, I have a few websites and then a, uh, one strategy that I'll share with you. Number one is there's a, a website called loopnet.com. Loopnet.com is a multiple listing service for commercial property only and it's the world's largest and um, they have a they have a apartments there shopping centers self storage and also mobile home parks so this is the first place that i will go to take a look at mobile home parks for sale there is a sister site that's a little smaller with different deals on it called cimls.com i will go there too so I would probably start with uh, loopnet.com, then go to CIMLS, all right? And probably the, uh, the biggest um, site for mobile home parks uh, in general is mobilehomeparkstore.com. Uh, they add, you know, dozens of mobile home parks uh, every, every month, uh, brand new listings. And uh, so I would try these guys out too, mobilehomeparkstore.com. Lastly, and uh, I really enjoy this site, number three, it's called 1031commercialproperties.com and I found some pretty good deals there, uh, mobile home park deals there, so I would check that out too. And uh, lastly is, oh, by the way, before, before I begin, uh, this site is, um, it's free when you first sign on, but to get all of the listings, uh, it's, it's, it's subscription based. This site is free and so are these um, other sites, okay? All right, number four is the direct mail campaign, right? This is probably my, my favorite way of finding parks and probably the best deals are gonna be found this way, direct mail campaign. Basically what you're doing is you're calling a, a, a professional list company and this list company can produce a list for you of mobile home park owners in that city. And you will purchase this list. It's probably you know 20 to 50 cents a name. All right, you pur you purchase this list, and you start mailing letters to those uh, owners stating that you like to buy their park. All right, and expect a response rate of between two and 10 percent. It just depends on the type of letter um, that you use. All right, all right. So this is probably my favorite um, way to find parks. Uh, but here's a key word that people always forget to make this, this um, process the most effective. They leave out the word campaign, all right? When a politician is campaigning, you see his commercial more than once, all right? So when you're doing a direct mail campaign, you need to send out the, uh, to, the, to the same owner more than one letter, okay? We like to stagger our letters uh, four to five weeks apart, all right? To make sure that they're getting, our letters are getting in front of them um, you know, every four to five weeks, all right? Okay, all right, let's just face it, uh, you know, myself included, uh, when I get home from work, 
I am, uh, I look at the mail, I have a, um, a A and B pile. A is critical mail, B piles junk mail pile. And we want to do our best to keep our direct mail out of the junk mail pile. All right, we do that by constantly putting it in front of the person that's going to open up the mail. Okay, uh, that's the reason why I don't, um, I'm not a proponent for postcards. Postcards are, are considered junk mail. I prefer for you to send out a letter that's handwritten, I'm sorry, a, a letter that's computer printed, but the envelope, the address is handwritten by you or by someone else, all right? It looks more personable, and but, but most importantly, it does not look like junk mail, all right? Now, the last thing I'll share with you, I want to give you a tip on using uh, these four uh, techniques. Uh, it's called the 20-30-50 rule. Let me explain that. So when you find any number of these deals, let's say you find here, you find uh, 20 here, you find 20 here, you find 15 here, and you find 10 here, all right? Out of those um, uh, high number of deals you're looking at, 20% of the deals will be considered good when the owner's motivated, all right? 30% will mean that the deals are uh, borderline. They may sell in a few months, six months, whatever. Then the other 50% are overpriced, all right? Uh, owners are not motivated, all right? So 20% is a high, um, you know, we should focus high on those. 30% may take some time to work on it. 50% overpriced, I wouldn't mess with them. Focus on the 20%, all right? Okay, all right, so the next thing and the last thing I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna share with you the top three ways to finance your first mobile home park deal. Okay, last but not least, the three most common ways to finance your mobile home uh, park if you're a beginner, all right? Number one is bank financing. Going to a traditional uh, bank, savings and loan, credit unions, um, uh, regional banks, all right? Going to, the, going to those banks, expect to put down between, today, between uh, 30 and 40% as a down payment, all right? The interest rates are competitive. They're probably the same interest rates are very close to what you can get for uh, apartment lending. So the rates are pretty good. Amortization periods, um, you know, 20 to 30 years. So the rates are pretty good. However, just like with any commercial real estate um, uh, lending program, the banks are gonna look at three things, okay, for your mobile home park investment. Number one, they're gonna look at the income and expense uh, of the mobile home park currently and for the last three years, all right? So you need this year and, and two additional years going back, all right? They'll need to look at those and make sure it has sufficient income to pay, to pay the mortgage and pay the bills, all right? Uh, the second thing they'll look at is, they're gonna look at the park condition and, in, and, the, and the area, all right? So the area and the park condition must meet the bank's standards, all right? And the third leg, for commercial lending is you. They're gonna look at your credit work, your credit worthiness. Uh, if you don't have it, you need to partner with someone, all right? So again, they're gonna look at the uh, property's income and expenses, they're gonna look at the location and the property condition, and number three, they're gonna look at you, the borrower, all right? So that's bank financing, that's number one. Number two and three are my favorites, all right? Number two is seller financing. I love seller financing. It's probably my favorite way to buy commercial property because you can be as creative as you can be. You can make it a win-win for, uh, for all, all right, for yourself, for the seller. And even if there's an agent involved, we can still make it win-win. This is when you get to be creative. The terms are usually better than bank loans. The down payment's usually less. Um, the terms are just greater. And for example, seller financing, most of us do uh, between 10 and 20% as a down payment. Up here is 30 to 40% down payment. Down here, it can be 10 to 20% down payment uh, with terms, all right? So, in fact, um, uh, from my ex uh, experience, about 30% of the parks that we run into are free and clear, meaning that there are no loans on the property, and that gives the seller the right to uh, be the bank for you because he can do anything you want since he's not tied with the loan, all right? So seller financing is the seller gets to be the bank for you. This is great because you and the seller get to come up with the terms, all right? There's no appraisal. 
There's no closing, there's very little closing costs, all right? And you can close very quickly, all right? So we love seller financing. In fact, most of the mobile home park transactions are seller finance deals, all right? Number three, um, seller financing, but with a mortgage or note assumption. What this means is that the seller has a current mortgage on the property, all right? But the mortgage can be assumed by you. So there are two ways in which you can buy this property. Number one is you can just assume the mortgage yourself. Just, you know, pay the equity difference and assume the mortgage like, um, you know, same, same type of uh, qualifications as this, all right? So that's the first way. The second way is my favorite way, and that's with um, seller financing. Uh, so what he has an assumable mortgage, but what you do is you're going to do, a, you're going to lease the property from him. It's called a master lease agreement. Basically, you're going to take over the property. You're going to be paying the mortgage. You're going to be paying the taxes, paying the insurance, paying all the bills, collecting all the rents. You'll, be, you, you'll get all the cash flow, right? And whatever price you guys come up with, that's the price that you're, you're topped out at. So if you can buy the property, let's say, at $500,000 in the course of <clears throat> three years, you can raise the, raise the rents $10 a month on each of the pads. And all of a sudden, the property is now worth $800,000 but you bought it at $500,000, all right? The beauty of the master lease is that $300,000 profit is all yours to keep, all right? But the best part with the master lease, there's no banks, there's no experience, there's no credit, all right? You just need to know how to do this, and that's one thing that we teach our students. We're very good at this technique. In fact, it's our favorite, all right? So again, bank financing, seller financing, and the seller financing with a... Uh, a master lease attached to it because of the loan assumption. All right, so these are the three most common ways. All right, so if you want more videos like this, more training like this, feel free to go to our website, commercialpropertyadvisors.com, or simply subscribe to this YouTube channel. All right, so thanks for watching and listening Mobile Home Park uh, Investing for Beginners. I'll see you at the next video.